All right, so we're going to introduce Excel and do a little bit of Excel basics to ensure people feel comfortable. So Excel is a great tool. It does more than just spreadsheet. We may be used to simply typing numbers into the sheets, but in this case, we're going to use a variety of functions and other skills in Excel throughout this class. So I trust you have some of the basic functions like being able to enter data. So for example, I can type numbers into these cells. I hit enter to move to the next cell. I can select data and then I can use shortcut keys such as control C to copy and control V to paste to duplicate data. In Excel, if you have a series of data, you can also drag to copy. So if I get this little black crosshair, I can drag down and fill a series. And notice here, it copies all these ones. But if I were to have a series of numbers in order, Excel is smart enough to recognize the order. If I select these and now click to drag, it'll fill the series instead of duplicate the values. These can help in being able to create some data real quickly. Excel also has some other special functions when you go to copy and paste. So if you'd rather not use shortcut keys, you can always copy with the menu. And then if we try to paste this, Excel has some interesting things such as transpose, which allows us to turn our data from a column into a row structure. This is occasionally helpful when we restructure data. As you learn, there's a variety of ways that data might be structured. Sometimes your book might give you problems where there's just a column of values such as these. Other times, you might have more of a full data set. A data set is usually indicated by variable names in the top row and values in the following rows. Each row is generally organized by participant. So you'll have a row for each person or unit of analysis you measured in a study. So if we, for example, use the format as table, Excel makes your values into a data table. So if I did you know, participant ID, height, and weight, and then I want to say, okay, this is my first person, and they were 70 inches tall and weighed 195 pounds, when I enter that, if I make this a table in Excel, it recognizes the headers of the table, and it now has a table. So when I come to the end of my table, it's going to start a new set, a new row in my table for the next participant. So this person, person number two, is 60, or excuse me, is 68 inches and maybe weighs 165 pounds. And I can continue then to organize this in a data table structure. So each of these reflects a different person, right, ID, and the height and weight that belong to a given person in the row. So this is a common data table structure. So you'll deal with data in different structures in this class, depending on the problem in the textbook or how it's given to you in a lab. So you'll want to pay attention to that and be ready to format it as you need for any given operations. So if I continue this just to do some example command functions, we're going to make a data table here with four people. Um, And so we have four people that I've entered values for into a data table. Now, Excel can do a variety of calculations. And here I'm just adjusting the width by double clicking. And so when we analyze data, we don't analyze participant ID, subject number. It's basically a person's name. It's just uh, we de-identify data. We take away the thing that could be identified, the person's name, for example, and just put a number instead. So this number doesn't reflect anything. It's just a placeholder. What we do care about are the values for the variables. So for example, X could be the X values here could be height and the Y values here could be the values for weight. So this would be X1, that is the height for the first person. And this would be Y1, the weight for the first person, X2, Y2, and so on. Now we can do the operations, for example, capital sigma, we can do equals sum, and then we can select the data we want to sum. Now notice in this case, it's just gonna label the data for height here. Uh, and that's kind of a useful function. There are some other shortcuts that we might learn throughout this class, but you can either type in the cell references. So for example, I could type in B2 
See, because that's in column B, row two, so B2 to B5. Excel uses the colon to say I'm doing the entire series. So I'm getting the sum of that entire series. So we can do that. It's a very useful thing. We can also just highlight the data inside of the parentheses that we want. Once we're ready, we hit enter, and there we get our sigma summation operator. So the sum of the heights, 263, right? Now we can also, with these types of formulas, we can do the click and drag function, and Excel is smart enough to realize now that we wanted the sum of the weights. And so by dragging across, I've automatically obtained the sum for this value. We can also do calculations with given values. For example, if I wanted to square all the weights, I can do that. And Excel here in my data table structure is smart enough to realize I might want that for all of them, and it autofills. Again, if it didn't autofill, I could click and drag, and it would do so. So there are the Y2s, or the weights squared. I could call it weight squared if that's clearer here. So that's the weight squared. Make it visible. And then I could get the sum of those, for example, right? And I could have done that by clicking and dragging in the same way that I could have done that by calculating. Excel also has commands such as average, which gets you the arithmetic mean. And here I can enter in the information I want from my table. So here I reference table one, it pulls up table one, and then I can reference what I want from table one, in that, this case height, right? And there you go, I can do that. So the average height is 65.75 inches. So you can do that if you want to. The other thing that you can do in Excel that's kind of interesting, if I have a series of values, I can just, for example, highlight all of them. I can come up to this area and I can give those see that series a name. So that series one, two, three is now values. So if I said, what's the sum? And then I type in values, it's gonna automatically recognize that data. And the sum of those numbers is six. So that's another clever trick you can use in Excel with some of these commands. Another thing you're probably gonna wanna know as part of the Excel basics for this class um, is the ability to count. Now, if you use the basic count function, it's going to look for numeric entries only. If we want to simply count how many cells have data in them, for example, if I wanna count, well, how many subjects are there? I can do count A, and it's gonna count any value that is not empty. So I can do count A of these values, and it's gonna count my IDs and tell me that I have four participants and of four in my study. And so this gives me the sample size. So there's a variety of calculations here that we can use. And Excel works as a basic calculator in the same way I did the squared function. I can do functions that allow me to simply add numbers. So I can add C2 to C3, and that just adds those two values. Uh, because I'm working next to the data table, it wants to append it to the data table, right? That's why it made a new column there. Um, and so there's a variety of functions we can do in Excel here. I'm happy to make videos if there's any that are um, kind of, I'm taking for granted some of the competencies maybe that aren't there. I'm happy to make additional videos reviewing other things, but I wanna make sure that we have the basics without overwhelming you. So some other things I want you to know here coming in week one is that you installed on the previous tabs, the data analysis tool pack. You should now be able to find that under your data tab and then data analysis in the top right. Again, to do this, you must be using the downloaded version of Excel. You cannot be using Excel online. The data analysis tab has some great basic functions. So for example, early on, we might start by using a lot of the descriptive statistics functions. And so if I wanna get descriptive statistics and maybe I wanna get the descriptive statistics for the variables, maybe I don't want ID. We're just gonna do height and weight. So I select those. I want to tell it it has labels because those first height and weight are the labels for those. And then I can tell it where I want my output. So it was going to make it on a new ply, so a whole new worksheet down here. Uh, but what I want is I want to put it on the same sheet. So I'm going to stick it here in F1. And I'm going to get the summary statistics. And so this will get me a variety of nice information. So I'm going to highlight these columns. I'm going to double click and it just adjusts the width so I can easily see everything. So here I get my means. So hey, the mean height, 6575. That's what we calculated earlier. But look how much it was calculated for me in a simple 
click. Uh, I got my sample size. The count here is what Excel calls it, which is what we got here. So all of these things have their own commands, but I can use the data analysis tool pack to get them earlier. So for example, if I use the equals average, now notice here, I just did this to make it not begin trying to do a function. If you begin with the equal sign, it will do a function. Um, so using this single apostrophe keeps it from doing that and allows me to type the equal sign um, without it trying to make it a function. So I'm doing this to list out the functions for you. You would not use that single apostrophe when you actually want to do a calculation. Okay, so I'm going to again use that apostrophe to keep it uh, from, from trying to make the equation work. And I could use, for example, median. That's another command. Um, Excel has the command mode. Excel has a couple commands, for example, standard div, and it has a dot s for sample, right? And it also has a, a dot p for population. So you can get both the sample and population versions, and the same is true for variance. Uh, and so a variety of these things we can calculate. Um, the minimum, the maximum, we already saw some. I'm not going to do a, some of these things. There are more complicated math involved in them. But some of the basic ones are worth knowing. And we'll see these more uh, being more useful in coming weeks in both of our courses. So here are some of the commands. You can use the basic count function. This function is going to require you to specify what you want to count. If you use the count a function, the count a function counts anything that isn't blank. So it's really useful to get sample size. Okay, so here are some examples. Uh, all the things we would have had to do calculations for to get some of these nice statistics. But again, Excel also works fantastically as a calculator and allows you to follow, for example, order of operations. So if I wanted to do um, the sum of these values and then square them, I can do that, right? But that's going to be different than if I do each of these values, for example, squared. And this could be done a shorter way. I'm just trying to make the point of the difference of what we're doing. So here I've squared each of these values individually, order of operations, square first, and then they're all going to be added. And notice those are not the same answer. This first one is summing all the values and then squaring them. Okay, so that's different. So here, for example, we got all of our squares of y, right? We squared all those values and we got that. And that's different than if we took the sum of y and squared it. So again, different numbers. So order of operations you can use by adding parentheses to enclose what needs to be done first for grouping symbols, and then all of the commands such as you use caret two to square, right? Uh, you can use basic uh, division functions, right? The plus sign, the minus sign, divide, and the asterisk for multiply. All of those things are available to you to write out equations to calculate in Excel. So there's quite a bit we can do. Excel, of course, also allows you to organize data with functions like sort. If you have a table, it allows you to do that within, right? So I can sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Notice it takes all the data and sorts it in a table. It does not just sort the single column. It realizes that these rows go together to describe given participants. That's the assumption in the data table structure. So we can use things like sort, and you can sort smallest to largest, largest to smallest, all kinds of functions. Um, there's quite a bit we could do, but I think this is a great start for you, and it'll allow you to do what you need to this week and prepare you for the coming weeks. So reach out if you have any other questions. I hope you find this helpful.